Okay, so this uh, stern transmitter is turning out to be quite a challenge, but I love challenges, and that's part of the joy, for me at least anyway, for scratch building, because you're always running into issues and challenges and problems, and it's the, the reward of overcoming them and, 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 and having a unique model uh, in your possession and uh, accredited to your skill set as you're learning to solve problems. And there's many different ways to do that. But one of the issues you can see here is I'm trying to develop this piece. I only need to do this this half, remember? Because once this is done, it'll be pretty darn close on this side as well. But here's the challenge. When you curve this, this plate here, this fairing, when it starts to curve and roll over, I, I need to maintain the same line all the way across to where you see that rear bouldered block, right where my thumb is. That line has to stay straight. So as that rolls over, it would drop down if you cut a pair, like a straight line. So what I need to do is, is I'm, I'm, I'm getting close with this paper template, but before I go any further with this paper template, I need to build up some formers here so that I can wrap it over and take up all the tension that I need or the height of the rear of this so that I can line it up to this plate here, which I'll use a, like a, a pal, just patch the inside of this, like with a small plate to weld the two panels together. So here's an example. So I cut two formers here, right? I use the French curve and just cut it out of scrap that you do these curves roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can see I cut these two formers out. If you draft on, oops, sorry, let me move this further up. Uh, when you draft on uh, Evergreen, right, I talked about sanding it so it takes a pencil well. And you can draft anything you want. That's why I don't have to draft on paper and then go to plastic. I just draft right on the plastic. Because even if your draft is wrong, it's not going to make the part right. So it's a lot of trial and error. So I cut these two pieces and they're going to go like this on this line right here. And notice how they sort of overlap the pipe a little bit there. Because that fairing piece is going to tuck right to about the middle of that pipe. It's going to line up. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to put this one here. Okay, I'll glue those in place and then what I'll do is, is I'll build another one here on each corner and then probably another one here. That way I can know that I got a nice glue surface there or, or points on top of these formers to establish that compound curve that's taking place here and then the, the, you know I'll use the trim and so on to uh, to pull it in but uh, I'll try to demonstrate that as much as I can and I don't know if I mentioned this but you can see the bollard pins are already in place uh, they're not uh, the actual bollard the bollard I chose to pin with a rod and then the bollard will go over top with a tube like that down to the deck height okay So there's these tension beads or steel half rounds that are welded onto the hull here. I'm not really sure what they're, they're for. They're probably uh, you know, multi, uh, multi-purpose to reinforce this part of the hull as it might be subject to uh, more impact and to have something to do with the tension and expansion of the hull because it is steel. So dirt, 
due to temperature and so on. It's going to uh, expand and retract, etc. But anyway, um, I'm putting those in with um, number 240 half round. So I just drafted the lines on at a 45 degree angle as per the photograph. Just lay some cement on there. And I just pre-cut the piece here. And it probably doesn't hurt to flood that a little bit since it's sort of weld welded anyway. And then just press it down with little pokes of the blade to help put a little bit of a texture on it. I'll show you the other side. You can see they're right like that. It just adds, I mean, it's prototypical, right? And it'll look really good when this is painted with washes and stuff. It'll really, you know, pop as a steel hull. Okay. Okay, I just want to deal with the scuppers here. Um, and I was trying to figure out the best way to, to demonstrate this. And I couldn't really do it uh, on camera because I'm moving the hull around too much in my hands like this. But you can see there's two scuppers here as per photo I drafted in. Okay. Um, now they're oval shaped, right? So this is how I do it. This is a blow up drawing. I'll just show you. So I just draw a rectangle along this fairing here where the scupper is going to be. And then I mark a center point and I know that my diameter drill bit is going to be this size. Okay. On both ends to create the rounded corners, right? Okay. Now I start with this like this center line runs through here like this to start with the smaller bit first or actually start with my 11 blade as i find roughly the center and just twist with the number with the number 11 blade into the plastic just just as a pilot hole to start i find this is a really good way to start your drill hole first because otherwise your drill bit tends to want to wander right so this is um what happens if you don't put a pilot hole with your number 11. A number 11 blades like this, it, it puts a, a pilot hole like this for you. So when you start your drill bit, it's, it's right on center, okay? If you don't, the drill bit tends to wander. It'll go off center. So then I drill this, this in this rectangle, right, which is here and here. There's four of them. As I drill the first, like a 1.5, five, whatever one point. So it doesn't really matter. I just graduated up. I think I used three or four drill sizes until you get this hole cut here, drilled out. And you got this rounded end like that. And it's nice and uniform and symmetrical. And then I take a number 11 blade and I score this and I score this. And then I usually cut slice like the, the center out. And then this, and these pieces just pop out like they fold and break off just like any plastic cut will do and I just gently clean this up so you end up with a oblong a rectangular scupper with round nice rounded like this see okay Okay, so I just want to point out uh, this particular part on shimming. Um, remember how I talked about how I use a lot of this? You know, like for example, the strip, right? 60 thou wide, 80 thou wide, 10 thou thickness, 15, 20. Um, it's not just for exterior cosmetic trim. It's also for, for, for uh, shimming parts and cl cleaning up edges. Like for example, like I want to make sure that I get all these formers or gussets nice and level 
you might not notice it now but when you go to sheet this it'll show right so you'll be kicking yourself then so um, I can see already by putting a straight edge across the back of this uh, block here that I need to shim these two right here see there because they drop below that because when I lay that sheet I want it to be nice and level so I did these corner ones as well and I do these ones here these ones in the middle seem to be okay so that way when I sheet it it goes on nice and level the sheeting okay Okay, I should also mention this, that uh, with cleats or uh, backing plates for joinery. So you see how this side panel, let's just call it, or fairing, ends here? Now I added a same piece of 10 by 60 just glued to the back of this, right? On both sides here and there. So when I go to cut this piece which will probably be 15 thou this thickness. When I bring it in, when I draw the line and I want to cut that in, I can glue it and, and merge it right into that panel and then just sand it clean so it looks like one, or a weld mark or whatever. It just gives me a point to glue it and to keep the surface level. Okay? Okay, so I got to show you this because this was really what a challenge like to get this plate, okay, you know, to fit the, the rear half of this trance. I mean, this is just the one half, but so the idea is, is when I get this one right after cutting all of these, well, how many? Well, these aren't all of them, but you can see, right? <laughs> like because of the compound curve and shape of this, you know. Um, like in the real world, I guess, or one to one scale, you'd probably like, I'm not a uh, sheet metal fabricator, but you know, they would probably use panel boards or something. Well, I mean, now they probably do everything in AutoCAD and whatever, but I just mean the old school way. So they would use like one eight skin panel boards and mock it up and then get it to fit and then lay it onto the steel and then plasma cut it or whatever, right? But I don't know, maybe they have the more modern way some of you CAD folks out there would know, but Anyway, this is a model and I don't have that, I mean, I can't do it that way with this, obviously, but, okay, so here's the piece finally, right? It's right here. I put a little check mark on it, see? So this is how it'll go on. Let me show you. So this is just the paper template. So once this is proofed, then I'll trace it onto 15 thou. So that sits into that little plate there. So it's flush. It'll be more rigid than this paper. Then you see how this, there's this sort of little wrap right here. See that? Okay. Just like this. See there? The pipe and how it goes. This here, like this opening, or I don't know what that is. I'm going to wait until this is all mounted and then I'll cut that in later. So, so this will get glued here and then I'll glue it along the bottom here. Right, but I won't glue it there because there's a scupper like this here. Okay, but I'll glue it onto the pipe there. And then you can see, so this final one, I had to trim it because it wasn't laying halfway on the pipe like that. Like it rides on top of that rear heavy steel pipe or bumper, right? Okay, and then it, it you know, lines up. I'll have to trim. I left it a little, little extra to the center line here. Okay, so that'll pretty much lay on there pretty, about, that's about as good as it gets. I can push it down over those formers and get it to curl. Okay, boy, I'm, like it took me the greater part of the afternoon. I mean, on and off, I had to run in and out for, for work, but you know, oh man, I'm so glad I got that. Now the question is, will it fit the other side if I flip it over, right? I'll know how close or how symmetrical this rear transom is. So it looks pretty good there. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. So I think I I I've got it, and I can tweak the uh, final cut. 
and then you know center it here to you know mesh that in okay so that part is good now let me just close with this part so these bollards so i wasn't sure how i was going to cut these because they're kind of like you can see them here again there's a couple of picks see the bollards right here see how they're sort of on an angle flush cut there's a plate on top of them right okay and they're on an angle which is what i got like i got the angle there so I, I wasn't sure, like, should I cut them to size and then drop them because I put pins on there for ease of assembly. But I thought it'd be too fiddly. I'd never get them straight. So what I did was is I glued them in really good. I'm going to let them sit overnight because they're pretty stiff now. And I'm just going to board sand these. I'm going to board sand all four of them like this to get them flush. Exactly, right? I'll do that tomorrow. And then I'll just cap them with tan thou with a square piece and glue it, plunge it on, and then just trim it with a knife and sand it round. And then I can add in, you know, a couple of the other details. There's these little, there's pins that come out just the side here on the bullard for ropes. But man, oh, and then also just in closing, I had to basically board sand the top of these gussets too. Like, like, because they were a little bit different heights. So I want to make sure they're exactly flush to all of this. Like I had to get all of this flush to the top, right? Like they all have to be flush, nice and level. So it runs all the way down the rail. So it's flush all the way down. Just like uh, in the photo. Do I have a photo of, of a side shot here that I can show you? Here. Okay, so you can see, this is a funny kind of angle, but you can see it's level all the way across the rear transom like that. It's the most bizarre compound curve I've ever actually scratch built. But I'm pretty happy that I've, I think I'm gonna be able to get it, like a very close representation of uh, what the rear end of this tug looks like. And it's gonna be cool because when I built, the winch is gonna be fun. And when I get this all in and the weathering and the rubber tire, like there's still more to go on this. It's so cool, you know, okay. Okay, so I just want to talk uh, or touch on this, uh, you know, these bowlers, the heights of these bowlers. You can see they're marked at five millimeters off the edge of this side panel here. Um, so I need to get these level and they're on an angle too because they deflect inward, right? Like the bollards are not straight up and down vertical, they angle inboard a little bit. So there's four of them and rather than try to cut each one individually, get the taper properly, glue them and line them up, it's just, there's no way you're gonna get them uh, uh, symmetrical. Right, so I just glued them in over length, like oversized, so they're fixed in really nice now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to board sand a pair of them at a time, and I've marked them, and I'm going to gently stroke them. I got this stick here, 60 grit sandpaper, so it hogs the plastic down quite quickly, but just gently stroke the tops of these so you can get them nice and level, get them down close to the line. Okay, and then I'll just take some lighter grit, like uh, 220 or something like that, and then just stroke them down as well, get them nice and smooth. Okay, and then I'm just going to cap them. I'll just glue, blob of glue, blob of glue, and just cap with a strip, like right on top like that. And then I'll just cut it away. It'll just be scrap, cut it away, and trim it away. Okay. Okay, so I want to talk about these bollard plates that slip over top of these bollards. I want to do that before I cap them, as I mentioned earlier. You can see they're right here. They're sort of built into the rail. See, the railing runs along here, the cap on the railing, and then you can see there's a big plate welded to them that supports the bollard. 
halfway up. You can see it right here with plain tape. Okay. So there's several ways you can do that. Like you can actually cut the part like dimensionally. Like I don't normally like to build this, like this way, but I will at times. It depends on the application or the situation and they're always unique when you're scratch building a model like different areas. You can pre-cut the piece like that and then you can, you know, slip it over. Let's see if I can get this to slide over. This is the scrap piece that I rejected though, but that's the way like you can do that and then slide it down and hope everything's dimensionally lines up or whatever. Or you can leave it on the sprue. Like I've talked about this before, like on the scrap like this, like here's an example of one. These are the two I'm going to use one for the other side there. So look, so I can slide this over like this. See, okay. Push that down nice on top of that where the railing is going to be. And then I can line this up and then glue that in place. Okay. I've already scribed a little bit of a score there so I can snap that off or cut it through after, but it allows me to manage the piece. Like see how I can wiggle it and move it a bit. So I want to be able to do that to line it up nice because there's, you know, different angles to it. And once this piece is glued in place, it's going to really make, excuse me, <clears throat> It's going to really make this corner very rigid and strong. So when I weld in the plate, this particular piece here, that's going to go on that I haven't cut out yet. Uh, when it starts to twist to compound the curve and bend over, it's going to be nice and stiff there. I'll have a good anchor point to, um, you know, to bend that into place per se. Okay. So that's why I'm just following it along like that. And I'm just thinking it through like, cause this gets to be a little bit uh, sensitive, this material, you can catch it on things and cause a little more damage than you care to do, even though you can fix it. But everything here is getting nice and solid now and ready for sheeting and finishing up this transom here. So I'll install those and then I'll cap those bollards and then drill, drill the side. There's still side pins that go on the side too. I'll mark those and then use my nub uh, number 11 blade to start the hole and, and drill and put some solid rod on the outside of each one of these and then cap them. Okay. Okay. So you can see where I cap the, the bowler tubes, right? And then all I do is, is I come along with some scissors and I just nibble them off. That's the beauty of the thin uh, evergreen sheet. It cuts nice with scissors. And then what I do is I just take a little file, like a nail file, and then round them off like that. And then just touch them up with some folded uh, 600 just to uh, round them off nice. And you get nice little bollards like that. And then I think I mentioned earlier, now that those are done, I'll just start a pilot hole with a number 11 blade here. And then another one here. And then just insert two rods that should finish those off. And then I'll just clean up the rear of this plate. Trim that up nice. And then you can see this trim right here. It runs all the way down. Once it's this is done back here, I'll just run that strip, start it there again, and run it all the way through. Okay. Okay, so the transom and this tuck, you know, um, Boy, where do I begin with this one? So I was at this last night for quite a while till quite late because I was just trying to make sure I would get this piece. Here's the paper template. I'll talk about that in a second. So that when I wrapped it, when it does this compound curve, it, it, it wouldn't pinch or buckle. Now, I don't think this is one part of the model that I don't think I'm going to get as accurate as I would like. Like here, let me just show you a photo here. 
It's quite complicated, actually, the, the rear of this tug, and depends on what photo you look at. Like, you can see a big steel pipe in here. That makes sense, right? <laughs> you know, big bumper, right? And then you can see how the side, like I've been calling this the gunwale, it's because I'm indoctrinated with warships, but I'm not really sure. Maybe Gary Goldsworthy, you can correct me, but... Um, so, like, it's almost vertical right here, right? And then it goes to the bow. But then as it comes back, it starts to lean in. See that? And then it just tucks right over to the rear of this. There's a block here. And also, too, there's these bollards. I believe they're hydraulically driven. I really do. Because I have another photo where there, I think there's two or three of these. And they pop up. Which makes sense, right? Because a cable r rides, like this cable scrapes and, and rubs across here all the time when they're pulling barges, etc. So they would want this to be clear at times. So how are you going to remove the bullard if it's welded in like this or fabricated in? So it pops down because you can see the rust there. See that? It looks like it's down inside a cylinder. Right now it's being used as a, as a you know, to tie off more to the dock here, but... There, I have some other photos, which I should probably show later, where there seems to be two or three of these in this big block, which makes sense because I wonder what that block was. Um, do I have a photo of it um, showing? Um, well, here's another photo right here. I zoomed in. See here? Okay, so there's a, there they are, right? There's one there, one there, one there. And then there's this roller, like a big rolling pin, which makes sense the cable and then this this plate here where it scrapes and then you know the rubber uh retread tire section here but anyway that's interesting but i don't know if i'm going to be able to get all of this exact uh without a proper drawing and maybe in a larger scale but i'm going to try to get it close okay as much as i can this here why this is here i have no idea <laughs> i don't know what that is if anybody knows, please feel free to comment, but I don't have a clue what that is. It's not a scupper because it's above the waterline. The scupper's down here. Okay, just like the scupper's like down here. And then this one I haven't put in yet. But on this side, I'm going to just cut it in. There's a smaller one here. Yeah, okay, so... Now, I did this last night, so let's pull this tape off so I can show you. This is probably the most challenging part of the model, for sure, so far, and hopefully will only be. <laughs> Famous last words, right? Um, so, I think I got this reasonable to where I want it. Okay, I'll just pull that off too. Now, you can see that I got it to start the wrap pretty good there. This part here, like these little formers that stick out, there's going to be another, I'm going to have to cut another piece. It's sort of a flat plate that goes across here, and then it tapers into where this bollard plate is. And this needs to be trimmed a little bit. But boy, was this ever challenging to get that, right? Imagine if you were an AutoCAD designer, you'd be able to resolve that easier but you still got to put a lot of time into it and you still got to cut the part to make it fit. You can do it digitally on, 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 uh, you know, with software tools, but when you're hands on tactile in the model, it's a whole different story, right? So I think I pretty much got it there. And this was the paper template and this, like I rehearsed this with paper over and over again. Now I'm happy with the way it's laying down and then I'll just trim that. So it's center right here. Okay. And then I flipped over this, like this was the piece that I used to cut it out with. And then I was very surprised that it was quite accurate when I came over to this side, which is why you need to get those parts, like mirror them and lay them up as close and accurately as you can. Now this piece here, see I cut that too short, the paper piece, see that's why you do that. See, I'm going to have to add to that so it meets that seam. I mean, you can always fill it with scrap and sand it and make it disappear, though. That's the beauty of, of plastic and solvent. But you can see that I lay the piece on like this with tape first. Sort of rehearse the part and then lay it on like that and then check it. 
see see that sorry i uh, see that gap there so i'll have to tweak that a bit but just so that you can get it because that'll look pretty cool like that'll be pretty close to where you know it's a fairly good representation but you can see the changes that you need to make first on the paper template and then trace it to cut out out of 15 thou uh, to make it fit so i'm pretty happy with that so far like i think i'll be able to work that and then there's just that big block that i was telling the big bowler block and i wonder what that was i have photos from other angles and i thought there must be something inside of that like like i understand why they would have that but why would they have this so it's like a cabinet a really heavy cabinet with hydraulics so those bullards pop up and down for whatever reason okay Thank you.